a comment on the rules, uh, are Turing, are universal Turing machines, right? So you can either think of it as a strip of paper, which is, which is just doing very simple computations back and forth, or you could also do your computation on the, on the level of, of squares and cellular automaton like this. And, and then what that means to be a universal Turing machine is that you can fundamentally reproduce the basic logical operations of and, not, and copy. And from that, you get essentially all of mathematics and all of anything you'd want. <laughs> How about like um, girls and companies there? Can you get all the numbers from just logic? Okay, so uh, that, that's kind of a so the touchy issue there is: can you derive all true statements recursively from a set of axioms? No, Girdle's incompleteness theorem tells us this, um, and that's why mathematicians will never go out of a job, right? Fundamentally. Um, there's always new truths out there that aren't reachable from your set of axioms. So you kind of have to go out there and meta-think and then, and then discover it, right, from a higher level outside of just a recursive operations acting on axioms. Um, but interestingly enough, Gödel's incompleteness theorem and the halting problem are really fundamentally kind of the same thing. Because um, the way you prove the halting problem is, is you feed the program which is supposed to decide whether or not it's going to stop to itself, right? And it's that very recursive nature, and it's, it's, it's fascinating. We'll talk about it more. So keep in mind that in uh, two lectures from now, I think, we're going to really teach you what Gödel's incompleteness is. So just, just, just wait for it. Like, it's coming. So an I'm going to show you another two more examples of cellular automata, and then I'll be done. One of them is um, voting patterns. Voting rules, it's what it's called. Um, and what it is, basically think of people uh, who talk to their neighbors and their opinion about you know, which political party is the best is slowly influenced over time by those people around him. <laughs> so think of um, these are like shades of gray, right? Like this person is sort of in the middle. This person's like really uh, Republican or something, uh, and and this person is really Democratic. Let's just consider this. So, um, what the rule is for this in in the in the game of life, it was binary. That means there were only two states, on or off, alive or dead. But in this in this situation, there are an infinite number of states. There, it's it's a it's a real number. Um, between negative one and one. So what happens is this person has a number, say it's 0.5, and he, every, every iteration, he takes stock of the people around him and adds to his number the sum of his surroundings multiplied by some small number. So he's, he's only influenced a little bit, but he's influenced by surroundings. And so what we get is, is called coarsening. It's a coarsening effect. So the simulation that I'm about to show you starts off with complete noise. It's, it's completely random. Each cell is assigned a value between negative 1 and 1 uh, randomly. And then we're going to apply this rule and, we'll, and just watch it. It's going to be beautiful. Uh -oh. Isn't that awesome? So it's going to keep evolving. And the end state will either be all black, all white, or half black and half white divided somewhere. So and, and it's just this very simple rule of summing the cells around you and adding to your state a, a very low weighted you know, portion of their opinion. So we get this complex behavior, like who, who would have thought, right? It's really cool. So I'll just go through the code quickly about this one. Uh, the structure is pretty much the same as the other ones, for, you know, these doubly nested for loops going through each individual cell. My is 
the cell we're at, neighboring cells, blah, blah, blah. Um, so this time, the cell's value is not 0 or 1, but it's a, it's a real number. Um, so we sum the neighborhood. So and this line sums up the rule right here, all of it. It says, my next value is my value, my current value, plus the neighborhood sum, the opinion of the neighborhood, times 0 0.005. Yeah? If you multiply by a lower number, does that mean it's just from to take like the first time to get the same state? Yes. So we can actually, this is the beauty of having a live program. So this number, uh, 0 0.005, determines the speed at which the system evolves. So if we make it 0 0.05, and run it, uh, you'll notice it go, it'll go a lot faster. It goes really fast, right? It's the same thing, just actually 10 times as fast, because it was 0 0.05 instead of 0 0.005. So we can go 10 times slower if we make it 0 0.0005. Let's make it 0 0.001, and, and it's going to go re really slow. But that's the essence of the system, just be influenced a little bit by our neighbor. So it's just going really slow now. But it is still going. And um, interesting fact, um, cellular automata similar to this one are used a lot to do image processing and graphics, to do like, like blurring, for example, is a cellular automata applied to the pixels of your picture. <laughs> I'd like to hop in there, if you don't mind, Kermit. Yeah. Um, but this is kind of a, and this relates to a project that Kern and I did with uh, the New England Public Systems Institute. Um, and this is kind of an example of what we call a, in the universality class of phenomena. Um, but the interesting thing is that this same rule, or this same behavior, is actually what governs gas droplet con condensation. So if you look at like the window of your of your car, and you initially just kind of have mist misting down on, on, on the surface of your window, what each water particle does is because it wants to fundamentally lower its its um, energy, it wants to take kind of the path of least action. Um, and based on on surface tension and the way that um, essentially the the interaction between these mo water molecules works is that water molecules like to be next to each other, right? Because it takes less energy to group together than it does for a bunch of water molecules to exist by themselves. And I think it's interesting that the same rules and behavior, which simple things like water droplets on, on, a, on a sheet of glass behave, it's the same way that people behave. Fundamentally, it takes more work if you're just a hunter-gatherer by yourself, then to come together in a society and grow collective farms and have someone responsible for this and responsible for that. So in this sense, we really do have a universality class of phenomena, the same laws which, which govern. And notice this is, this is pure physics when it's in terms of water molecules. I mean, I can actually work out the energy values. Yet, when we're talking about human societies, you don't really have equations. But with cellular automaton, we do. We have, we have equations of how societies interact. And one of the interesting things which the New England Complex Systems Institute is working on is, is um, actually prediction of ethnic conflicts and violence. And you can use very simple models like this to, to predict where, where you know, if you're talking Gaza Strip, right, you've got Palestinians and Israelis, how do they mix and, and form together and then segregate each other and, um, and what happens there. And this can all be described using this same kind of very simple graphical rules. We see complexity or, or we see because we don't understand the basic laws of the system. Mm -hmm. Because you see all this stuff, it's almost the same, but we just don't see it. We don't see it. Okay, so you're asking, like, is it just that we don't see the underlying laws behind society and behind water molecules and things like that? And that really is kind of an idea which Stephen Wolfram, in, in his book, A New Kind of Science, voices.